EK sent over their new MLC Phoenix modular AIO cooler. And with it, they included blocks for both the various mainstream Intel and AMD sockets, but also the much larger STR4 socket and the Threadripper line of parts. I have a chip in need of some serious cooling that I use every day, and I'm anxious to see if this can do the trick. EK has a somewhat dicey history with AIOs. Coming from being the premier choice in custom water cooling, they dove in headfirst to the AIO scene with the EK Predator in 2015, an all-in-one made of custom loop parts that was designed to be expandable and serviceable. Unfortunately, there were issues. And despite the initial thought that it may have just been a bad batch, it turned out that all of the Predators were recalled. However, like these solid citizens they are, not only did EK refund customer purchases, but they also made a promise to reimburse users for any damage done to their PC components due to leaks. This is kind of how you can tell good companies from bad. It's not how they act when everything is going perfectly. It's more how they react when everything is hitting the fan. And I have to say, EK Waterblocks certainly did the right thing here but they weren't about to sit on their laurels and let everybody else run the lucrative AIO game. They've come back with some new designs and a fully modular system built from the ground up with premium parts. This is the EK MLC Phoenix, and just from the looks of it, EK wasn't messing around. First of all, this is a fully configurable system. You could go on EK's website and design it yourself from the ground up, including radiator sizes from 120 millimeters all the way up to 360. This includes everything in between in both 120 millimeter and 140 millimeter varieties. You then move on and choose which socket you'll be cooling, and then you let EK know if you want to include a GPU cooler in your loop as well. As you've probably noted, yes, this is an expensive alternative to your standard Corsair H115i but keep in mind the following. The Phoenix is a full copper setup. This means that the radiator, CPU block, and GPU block are all machined out of high quality metal with excellent thermal transfer capabilities. You don't have to worry about mixing metals here either, as all the parts that fit into this ecosystem are designed to be worry-free and much easier to work with than your standard custom loop. It is, however, targeted at users who want the best cooling capacity and a high-end experience. The modular design will allow you to easily add components to your loop or swap them out for others without the need to drain it like you would a normal custom loop. Each piece comes pre-filled from the factory with EK's quick disconnects that allow for quick plug-and-play setup without any fluid leakage, really, or any spillage almost at all. Now I will say that as you add more components to your loop, these tubes can get a bit unruly, and it's likely there will be excess. This is especially something that's pretty important to be keeping in mind if you are gonna be working in a small tower, micro ATX or mini ITX. These tubes might be a little too long for the setup that you want. So one way or another, you'll need to find a home for them or manage them like you would cables so as to avoid having them flop around. Also, while the QDCs are incredibly convenient, they're not the most attractive pieces. But if you're okay with having a couple of bulky connectors, then it's not really an issue. The radiators also come with three of EK's excellent Vardar fans, which run strong and silent. These fans are about $20 each by themselves. Now, speaking of the radiators, EK calls these the core modules, as you'll need to start here before building any loop. The radiators are off-the-shelf EK cool streams, mated to an EK 60 amp SPC pump and a small matching reservoir. They include a PWM fan hub similar to what Fractal Design included with their Celsius line, and this makes fan wiring a cinch, since you only need one PWM cable to the motherboard instead of three. When choosing your core module, keep in mind that this will be the only radiator in your system, so size accordingly for what you want to cool. For most CPU plus GPU loops, I'd say bigger is better if you can fit it. The CPU blocks are also a pretty unique design that I think will be actually pretty polarizing. 
I personally think they look great, and it's nice to see a change from the standard flat metal or acrylic tops that most companies offer. The blocks are slightly larger than the EK Supremacy when compared height-wise, and as such they do look a bit bulkier, but they don't bulge out to the sides at all, so there shouldn't be any problem interfering with memory modules or anything else in your case. What I have here is the 360 millimeter core module. And the reason I'm excited to test it out is that my current editing rig consists of an Intel i9-7900X running at a 24 seven overclock of 4.6 gigahertz at 1.2 volts. Now, while this is impressive from a voltage standpoint, the chip is still an absolute furnace. My Be Quiet Silent Loop 280 does a fine job at idle, keeping us around 28 degrees or so. However, during video exports, when all 10 cores are at or near 100% load, I routinely see temps spike above 100C. I've even had some longer exports fail and had the entire system crash due to complete thermal shutdown. To try to somewhat mitigate this, I've resorted to removing the front panel of my H700i when doing an export. But I found that helps by only maybe five degrees or so, not nearly good enough for the long-term health of a thousand dollar processor. Let's get the MLC Phoenix set up and installed and then see if there's any temperature difference from what we're running right now. All right, so we got the EK Phoenix all set up in the system and ready to go. This is my main editing rig. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to point out was you could see that this tube here is actually a little kinked right here and I've been trying to find a way to maneuver it but because of these quick disconnects it's hard to uh, it's hard to make like a smooth bend when you're trying to figure out like how to run these tubes because it's they have to go obviously all the way to the to the front and so you know you end up in a situation where uh, you have this excess tubing that's running up this way and then down and then if I were to try to maneuver this at all um, it would kink more so I'm really trying my best to just kind of leave it as is for now it does fit in if I just like push this a little bit it does fit uh, with the uh, with the side panel on which we're gonna do in a second but that is just something to keep in mind like I mentioned these tubes are pretty long and you're gonna need to find a way to uh, to manage them and make sure that they're not kinking because they do seem to uh, be a little more prone to that than the old rubber hoses that came with the Predator. Okay, so we're back into Windows now, and you see we have our Adobe Premiere project. In the background, this is my overclocking video on the AMD APUs. Uh, we have hardware monitor running right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start up this render, and then we're gonna bring hardware monitor back up and see how our temperatures are doing. Uh, so we're just gonna we're just gonna export this right to the desktop, the entire sequence, and export. And let's see what's going on here. So you can see that the uh, the CPU utilization automatically just shoots right up to 100% for all the threads. And our temps have also gone way up from what they were at baseline. But comparatively, this is, I, I don't know, 30 degrees less. Uh, we haven't reached uh, temperature saturation yet with our coolant. So let's give this a few minutes and I'm going to fast forward here and see where we end up. All right, so we're about four, five minutes into our render at this point, and I understand that this isn't quite enough to reach full saturation of the loop under, I guess, normal circumstances, but uh, I'm gonna call this because these temperatures are not, this isn't moving. These aren't going up. The R maxes haven't moved really. They're still either high, mid 60s, high 60s, and then low 70s. This is, this is an incredible improvement over what I was using. And what I was using was a really good AIO. The Be Quiet Silent Loop 280 is a really good copper radiator AIO. And this is a full 30 degree drop from where we were at just by switching it out. Yes, I understand we are certainly using more cooling capacity with a 360 millimeter radiator versus a 280, but this, 
is pretty incredible. I don't think you could attribute that fully to just the square centimeter difference between the two radiators. And um, I am, I am impressed. Color me impressed. With absolutely impressive thermal results, full modularity, high quality components, and easy user serviceability, does the Phoenix justify its high price tag? Does the fact that this is an EK product make you more or maybe less likely to consider it for your next project? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget to get subscribed to the channel if you're not already, and check out the merch store link down below. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.